Hi everybody, I'm back for the next uh, entry in the Transformers uh, marathon and here is the fourth live-action Transformers film, Transformers Age of Extinction. Age of Extinction again is an action sci-fi hybrid that came out in 2014 and uh, ultimately the plot, this time the plot is a bit more convoluting than the previous one so I'm going to try to try to explain it as best as I can. Age of Extinction takes place five years after the events of Dark of the Moon, even though Dark of the Moon came out three years prior to Age of Extinction's release. And uh, the human race has basically had it up to this point with the Transformers, realizing they brought their war to our world. They've decided to essentially hunt down all the Transformers, Autobots and Decepticons alike, and ultimately eradicate them from the planet. And uh, a new organization has come up, this kind of a group called Cemetery Wind, hosted by a man, headed by a man named Harold Attinger, played in the film by Kelsey Grammer. Um, where's his name at? I don't know why. Oh, there, well, no, I, I thought that would know. Well, yeah, Kelsey Grammer's in the movie, but I'm surprised his name's not on the back of the Blu-ray there. But basically, their mission is to essentially wipe out all the Transformers off of planet Earth. But he's also secretly in cahoots with uh, uh, head of a uh, group, uh, company called KSI that's planning to use the Transformers or what's left of them and use their material to basically make more, uh, make more of them to more of their liking. And ultimately, uh, Harold Attinger is in cahoots with a, uh, with a Transformer called Lockdown who is basically sent by the creators of the Transformers to bring back Optimus Prime. And Lockdown is uh, planning to uh, give a uh, give a device called the Seed, which basically produces the material that <clears throat> that the Transformers are made of. Also, getting into the mix is uh, inventor Cade Yeager, played by Mark Wahlberg, who is basically uh, just trying to make ends meet, along with his daughter Tessa, played in the film by actress Nicola Peltz. And, uh, and, of course, her boyfriend gets in on the mix, too. And, of course, uh, Cade Yeager's kind of got that, like, you know, no dating policy <laughs> in his house. I know, it's a Michael Bay thing. they got to throw this little thing. they got to throw this little goo goofy subplots in there throughout the movie. But, basically, uh, yeah, and he discovers an old abandoned truck, which is revealed to be Optimus Prime. And, of course, Optimus Prime has now basically got a, you know... Cemetery Win basically wants this guy to destroy. Well, they don't want to destroy, but they want to give him back to Lockdown so uh, Lockdown can take him back to his creators. So, yeah, like I said, there is a lot to take in in this movie, especially with, uh, even though, again, the action and the visuals are just mind blowing, but yeah, the plot and the story, again, you know, for a Michael Bay film, it, it really is a lot to take in, and especially since. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against long-running movies, but the Transformers films, I, I swear, these movies just get longer and longer with each movie. I mean, look, the first movie was 143, right? Second film, Revenge of the Fallen, 149. Dark of the Moon was 154. Age of Extinction is 164 minutes. Well, on the actual Blu-ray runtime, it's 165, but still... Good lord, do they really need to be, like, that's, that's 16 minutes shy of three hours for crying out loud. Does the Transformers movie really need to be that long? Oh my god. But nonetheless, though, what does follow is uh, there is a wealth of action, and uh, the visuals galore, literally, I mean, the visuals are, like, Oscar-worthy once again in the movie. I mean, even though it's kind of funny how uh, two of the Transformers films did pick up visual effects Oscar nominations, the original and Dark of the Moon, Revenge of the Fallen didn't get nominated. I don't know why, because, again, the visuals were great. Age of Extinction, once again, had some great effects. It really did. Um, the action, once again, it doesn't let up. At, but I will say the one thing about the Transformers film I'm never going to I'm never gonna disagree with is they never stop being entertaining. They are literally nonstop entertainment from beginning to end, literally. And I think that's one of the best things Michael Bay is best known for. 
so yeah, the the of course when the movie uh, debuted in 2014, uh, it actually had a fairly decent sized opening, but uh, it was of course once again pummeled by critics. Currently, it has a um, I would say 17, maybe 18 percent on Rotten Tomatoes at that point, making it the lowest rated Transformers movie, even lower than Revenge of the Fallen. And uh, but surprisingly, though worldwide, it was a huge success. Grossing over a billion dollars, making it the highest grossing, well, close to being the highest grossing Transformers movie. Dark of the Moon made just slightly more than Age of Extinction. But worldwide of 2014, Age of Extinction was actually that year's highest grossing film as it was the only movie of 2014 to snag in over a billion dollars. So essentially making Age of Extinction the only Transformers film that was the top money maker the year of its release. Uh, Dark of the Moon was pretty close. It was actually one of maybe a couple of mo a few movies of 2011 that made over a billion, but obviously it couldn't dethrone uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. But Dark of the Moon was pretty close, though. But yeah, Age of Extinction was the one and only movie of 2014 that made that much money, and yet it was also one of the worst reviewed films of that whole year, despite its lengthy runtime and. Uh, and the fact that the story has a bit of a convoluted feel to it. Honestly, I thought Age of Extinction was pretty good. I mean, it's it definitely ranks up there as one of my favorites of the Transformers movies. Um, for one thing, I think Mark Wahlberg makes a better leading man than Shia LaBeouf, for one thing. He's nowhere near as annoying as Shia, and I think Mark is a fairly decent actor. Um, some of the acting in the film is not bad. I mean, Kelsey Grammer definitely makes for a pretty decent villain you'd love to hate because, uh, but again, he's, he is a pretty well-known actor anyway. Nicola Peltz, uh, again, she's like Megan Fox and Rosie Huntington Wiley. I feel like she's there for just eye candy, to say the least. That's the thing about Michael Bay's movies. Um, Stanley Tucci, who plays the head of KSI in the film, he's also pretty good in the movie. But yeah, I mean, once again, this is one movie where I do like the interactions with the uh, humans and the uh, and the uh, and the Autobots and the Transformers. I think they're pretty cool, and I do like the interaction between uh, Mark Wahlberg and uh, Optimus Prime. Oh yeah, and the other I forgot the other plot is uh, KSI is uh, playing is rebuilding a Transformer called uh, Galvatron, which which they don't seem they quickly uh, well it doesn't take long for them to realize that Galvatron is Megatron reborn essentially. If anybody grew up watching Transformers, they'd know that, yes, Galvatron is essentially Megatron's newer body. So, uh, no Oscar nominations for Age of Extinction, but it did pick up a bunch of Razzie nominations. It picked up, like, seven or eight, and uh, actually ended up walking away with two of them, uh, winning for uh, Worst Supporting Actor for Kelsey Grammer, which, uh, again, I'm surprised he won, because He's actually one of the best actors in the entire movie. And uh, Michael Bay took Worst Director. So it's the second time he uh, won Worst Director for a Transformers film. But most of the time, I think the Razzies sometimes are a bit of a joke. Because, again, they nominate films that, you know... Is Age of Extinction the worst movie of 2014? No, not even close. It's one of the most entertaining films of that whole year, but not the worst. <laughs> So, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the Blu-ray, shall we? And again, this is going to be quick because Age of Extinction's Blu-ray release is pretty much just as awesome as the other films in the franchise. The Blu-ray release, the video quality is fantastic. So inside here, there's actually three discs. Oh yeah, the Dinobots also make an appearance in the movie too. I almost completely forgot about them. But they don't show up until like way late in the movie. I'm talking over two hours into the film, they finally show up. So yeah, there's the movie disc. Second disc has the bonus features, and the third disc is the DVD copy. So for the video, um, well, what can I say? Age of Extinction is awesome. It looks beautiful in high def. There are a couple of spots where the picture does get a little grainy since uh, Michael Bay shot it with, basically shot it with digital and film combined. So it does get a little uh, odd when you see the shot look beautiful and all of a sudden it goes to like, <coughs> sort of like a, sorry, it goes to a bit of a grainy imagery, almost. Sorry, got a bit of the hiccups there for a second. <clears throat> 
but uh, but overall, it, it looks beautiful. I would say out of five stars, definitely a solid five out of five. As for the aught, yeah, and of course the video is presented in a 235 by one or 239 by one. Again, the aspect ratio is not mentioned on the back here, but as for the audio, oh man, I'm surprised this film didn't get sound or sound editing Oscar nominations because it, it would have deserved them because uh, the audio is it just pulse pounding beyond belief. Uh, Transformers Age of Extinction was actually the first movie released on Blu-ray or 4K to get the, uh, to get a Dolby Atmos track, which is way louder than any of the DTS HD tracks featured on any previous release. So, which means this thing is going to be loud. And I mean very loud. I mean, if you have speakers, this is actually a good one to show off your system at. And of course, there's a plethora of audio tracks to listen to here. Lots of them here. And you're like, yeah... English Dolby Atmos, uh, 5.1 Dolby Digital, English 2.0 Dolby Digital. Uh, you got French, Spanish, Portuguese, audio tracks. There's also an English audio description track. Lots of subtitles here. Well, not many, though. Yeah, the 7.1 Dolby True HD compatible. But, yeah, it's uh, like I said, this thing is loud. <laughs> Put simply, it's as good as the film looks. I, I really have, I really can't say it. But the only way I can tell you is you got to experience it for yourself. I would say out of five stars, once again, if I could give it a rating higher than five, I would probably give the audio maybe a 10 out of five. That's how loud and pulse pounding it is. As for the bonus features, well, uh, it pretty much has the same exact uh, feel as Dark of the Moon, where the movie is presented on one disc. Uh, no commentary, unfortunately, but... I'm actually glad they put the movie on one disc and the bonus features are put onto a second one. And uh, the bonus features, there's roughly about three hours worth of behind-the-scenes material. Several documentaries and featurettes that talk uh, a great deal about the making of the film. Basically, it goes into everything. The stunts, the action, the visuals, the location. Basically, coming up with the story and concept, everything. So, essentially... All you need to know about Age of Extinction is all on there. And like like I said, it's not a bad supplemental package. It really uh, it really goes really well with the movie. I would say out of eight, uh, five stars, once again, the bonus features, I'd probably give them maybe out of five, probably four and a half. So again, whether you love or hate the movie, the movie was not very well liked, but it was a huge phenomenal hit at the box office. But nonetheless, though, Age of Extinction... Uh, gets one hell of an amazing Blu-ray. The video is fantastic, the audio is just loud as all hell, and the uh, bonus features are plentiful. But like I said, it really would be nice if a commentary was included, but for a movie this long, it probably was best that they didn't include one. So, you know, to make the, the movie look as good as it can be on Blu-ray. So once again, uh, bravo to Paramount. Another fantastic uh, stellar release of a great, of a fun movie on Blu-ray. So, is Transformers Age of Extinction worth checking out? I'd say give it a watch. But definitely save some time aside, because, like I said, this is a long one. So, well, anyway, that concludes the presentation. I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, of course, I'll be reviewing The Last Night here in a little bit, so... I'll be getting that video up eventually after I get this one put up. So, and uh, if you like this comment, I mean, if you like this content, be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel. I've actually changed my uh, channel name by now. It's now Unknown Lionheart. So, I actually kind of like that name a little more. So, until then, everybody take care and be safe.